public hearing. I realize there's a lot of folks out in the hall, and I think the mayor was going to try to check with Andy at Channel 95 to see if we can get it turned on out in the hall. Um, I'll encourage those, when you do speak or you've had an issue addressed and you feel comfortable, maybe you can switch out with the folks in the hall, but uh, we're going to do the best we can. This will not be the last meeting, as far as I'm concerned. Obviously, we're not going to get all the answers uh, today, but this, this purpose of this meeting is to uh, allow the community the chance to speak. I will encourage when you do speak to please address issues at Bull Run Steam Plant. Uh, I understand there's issues at other locations such as uh, Harriman and Kingston and other locations, uh, but this purpose of this meeting is to gather information so that we can share this information with this legislative body and then also make decisions as we move forward with TVA and uh, give our official opinion should they decide to go, go with this landfill of 60 acres that they uh, may be requesting. Um, please silence your phones if you haven't. Um, I'm going to kind of read through the agenda. We have agendas. If I don't know if it's listed on the board up there or not, but if you need a copy, just ask around. Jay Yeager, our law director, has some. Uh, we'll be happy to get you one. So I'm just going to kind of run through the agenda real quickly. Again, thank you for coming. We appreciate your attendance in this matter. I'm Tracy Wandell, the uh, chairman of um, the county commission, Anderson County. I'm in District 1. Uh, I'm going to allow the commission to go around and introduce themselves. I know Commissioner Scott is, may show up late, and uh, Commissioner Anderson sent me a note. Uh, his workload was a little heavy. He said he may show up late as well. So uh, I'm going to start with Rick Meredith, and we'll work our way around the horn, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Rick Meredith. I represent uh, District 2 here in Clinton. Jerry White, District 5. Steve Mead, uh, District 6, west part of Oak Ridge that's still Anderson County. Bob Smallridge, uh, District District 8, Oak Ridge. Tim Isbell, uh, District 4. Jerry Creasy, District 7, Oak Ridge. Shane Bow, District 4. Catherine Denenberg, District 6, Oak Ridge. Chuck Fritz, uh, District 1, uh, Claxton area. Thank you, Commissioners. I appreciate you being here. We do have a court reporter recorder. Uh, so when you do speak, state your name, your address. Um, if you're a citizen, obviously, obviously just say a citizen. If you're in official, official capacity, I'd appreciate if you say what your capacity is, who you're with, whether it's TDEC or TVA or such like that. So again, I'm going to read through some of the agenda items here. Item A, the subject is Tennessee Valley Authority, TVA, new landfill application permit IDL 01-0220 Bull Run Fossil Fuel Plant. Uh, item B, the purpose. The purpose of this meeting is to allow Anderson County citizens and the county commissioners an opportunity to voice their opinion and concerns regarding a request by TVA to construct a new 60-acre landfill on the TVA-owned Bull Run Fossil Fuel Plant site located at 1265 Edgemore Road, Clinton, Tennessee, 37716. The purpose of per, the proposed new landfill is known as Site J and has been characterized as a three cell unit capable of holding eight to nine million cubic yards of coal combustion residues, also known as CCRs. Written comments. If you have written comments with you this evening, we have a wire basket up here by Commissioner Fritz with the orange tag on it. You're more than welcome to come up and put your comments in the box at any time, and uh, those comments, again, will be recorded, and you don't have to come up and speak, but you're more than welcome to. And if you have comments later after this meeting, I talked to, to the law director about this because I know that you may get questions as this proceeds on this evening that you might want to ask later, so this isn't the only opportunity, as far as I'm concerned, that you're able to put comments in until we get to that point. Is that correct, law director? March 16th. Commissioner Fritz, yes. Uh, I'd like to uh, also recognize that we do have the mayor of Oak Ridge with us tonight. Yes, and we have some other officials, and I'm certainly going to appreciate it, Commissioner Fritz. We're going to certainly recognize them all. Um, so written comments, put in the basket if you have them, or you can send them afterwards. Uh, then we'll move on to commissioner's questions. Um, 
Is there any commissioners that have questions at this time? Uh, let, let me look here. You know, I'd, I'd really like to let TVA and TDEC speak before we get into questions, commissioners, because we may have a questions that they'll answer, if that's okay with, with all of you. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, we're going to have the same rule we have in effect when we have a regular commission meeting, which is three minutes. And as you can tell, we have a lot of folks, and we have a regular commission meeting scheduled at 6. So we're sorry for this quick uh, turnaround, but that's what we're up to. Again, we'll have another meeting if we can't get everybody. And feel free to reach out to the commission, the law director, the mayor, if you have any other feedback that you're not able to get to tonight, if that happens. Uh, again, this decision is no later than April 1st, 2020. And that's from this body, is that correct, Jay? Based on these meetings and information we obtain. All right, so we'll start off with the county uh, mayor remarks. Um, I'd like for Mayor Terry Frank to come up. Mayor, do you have anything you'd like to uh, comment on? Or she may have things in writing. She might be out in the hall still, there she is. <laughs> it's a crowded hall. <laughs> I'll be brief because um, my interest is in hearing from the people uh, here in the community. Um, I'll say real quickly, Mr. Chairman, that um, as a small girl, my grandfather was a coal miner, my dad was a coal miner. Uh, we put coal in the furnace in the house I grew up uh, in Oliver Springs. And since that time, we have learned a lot about coal ash, things that we didn't know back in that time. And I appreciate your work, uh, Commissioner Denenberg, who's led the Intergovernmental Committee, uh, a lot of the experts that have come in this room and shared their opinions, and sometimes those have been differing opinions. Um, I know that TVA has not issued a recommendation yet. Um, as I've said many times in public, I'm gonna lean heavily on TDEC, but I want and I will advocate for, as a community leader, what is best for the community. And there are, as I see it, three options. One is leave everything in place. And I've heard um, some folks, even um, um, folks that I've disagreed with in the past in the Oak Ridge community who have advocated for that position. I've had some say, uh, some experts recommend uh, we leave it, but we move it on site. And then we have some who recommend complete removal from the community. And so uh, I'm going to be watching all of that information as we study that, as TVA makes their recommendations, uh, as TDEC advises us, and uh, I will work uh, with you all in the community on what's safest for our community and best for the longevity of our community. Thank you, Mayor. I Thank appreciate you. you being here. Appreciate Absolutely. your comments. Appreciate what you do. Okay, next we're gonna, in, in, uh, we're gonna go law director then we'll go to TVA, then we'll go to TDEC, and then we'll introduce, uh, as Commissioner Fritz already alluded to, uh, Mayor Warren Gooch will have some comments. Then we'll go to the citizens, and the citizens will have a chance to get up again, introduce yourself, your name, your address, and uh, we'll start taking those comments. Uh, Jay, go ahead, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate everybody coming out tonight. Just a couple of quick housekeeping matters. Um, again, if you do have written comments, please feel free to put them in the basket. If not, you've got a dedicated email address on our public notice. I'll give you a copy of that. You can send it directly to that email address or you can send it directly to me. Uh, if you plan on speaking tonight, just speakers, please sign in legibly. Give us a phone number and email address so that we can get back with you. Um, we've got some maps up here that you're welcome to look at. The overall TVA site, Bull Run, and also the proposed site J is to the left. And uh, we've got the overhead up here on the monitors. The site, I believe it's inside the green. Is that Catherine? It was on the turquoise, yes. Yeah, turquoise. Yeah. I'm a little colorblind, but uh, those are TVA properties. Okay. That's the site J. That's, that's the residences that have been bought out. Okay. okay. Uh, just, uh, I've got some friends here from TVA. Jennifer Brundage is here. Uh, Stephen Johnson is here. Uh, friends from um, TDEC. Uh, Chuck Head has always been great to talk to our citizens. And Rob Burnett, who's uh, the technical in, they'll be glad to field some questions for you. The general position of um, TVA is the Jackson Law does not apply. They are 
uh, in the belief, and they've uh, promised me that there will be no out-of-county waste transported to this facility. It'll be only waste that's generated on the property. Uh, however, this is your opportunity to speak. This is your opportunity for TVA to hear your concerns. Um, there is an alternative uh, plan that's in place, and who knows if TDEC approves it and TVA goes ahead, we may not, they may not need Site J. Uh, they may be able to house what they have, the remaining CCR, coal combustion residuals, in place at the current locations. Um, we have asked for an MOU, that's a memorandum of understanding, uh, in a sense, that's a governmental contract um, between Anderson County and T TVA. They're unwilling at this point to do that, but however, they are willing to condition their permit on the fact that no out-of-county waste will be brought into Anderson County. Only waste that is generated at the Bull Run site. And um, they'll be glad to write that in. Jennifer, let me know if I'm over-speaking, but they'll write that into the permit as a condition of the permit they're applying for. Um, that's all I've got at this time. I'd like to um, make a few other comments for the uh, record later on, but uh, you can go ahead and move on to uh, TVA and TDEC. Thank you, Jay. And you. before I get to TVA, I just want to say this. This meeting is not to attack TVA or elected officials or TDEC. This is simply an opportunity for you to express yourself on what your feelings are and your thoughts and your concerns for TVA, this legislative body, TDEC, and anyone else that wants to hear. So let's refrain from any attacks on, on any, any group, any, you know, everyone needs a chance to speak and, and have the chance to respond. So this is, again, not a question and answer situation. You come up, you make your statements, and then we move on. Uh, this body will have a chance to ask questions if you have, have a question. Um, but we're going to try to get everybody's comments. And um, if, we, if we start crossing the line, I'm going to gavel once as a warning. If, if we go a little further, I'm going to gavel again, and we'll move, move you outside so we can get to the business at hand. Again, we just want to gather information. That's the purpose of this meeting. Okay, with that said, TVA, please come to the microphone. Hey, Bert. Hey, Chairman. Can you hear me okay, Chairman? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Apologies to have my back to some in the audience. Uh, good afternoon, Chairman, uh, members of commission. My name is Burt Robinson, and I'm not an attorney and I'm not an engineer, but I am a proud 12-year employee of TVA. We appreciate your continued interest in TVA and what we're doing at Bull Run. TVA has been a part of the Anderson County community since our beginning, back in 1933, and we've been a part of the Claxton community for over 60 years. It's important to us and to me personally to, that we continue to be good neighbors as we have been for the last six decades. That commitment will continue even after the plant closes in 2023. It's our understanding that you have convened today's public hearing and, uh, pursuant to the Jackson Law to discuss the construction of TBA's proposed new dry storage landfill at Bull Run. It is TBA's position that was stated earlier that the Jackson Law does not apply to the proposed Bull Run landfill because we will not be bringing waste to it from outside Anderson County. We therefore urge the Commission not to take formal action with respect to that law. TVA is here, however, to address any potential confusion that exists around the proposed new landfill and to provide factual information about it. And before we address the proposed landfill specifically, it's important to make clear that TVA has not made any decisions on the future of coal ash storage at Bull Run. It is also important to explain where we are in the ongoing process. We care about our friends and neighbors in this community and about protecting our land and waterways. The safety of this community and the safety of our employees is our priority. As part of our ongoing monitoring and management efforts at Bull Run, we have already collected a lot of data, and TVA is doing more by conducting an a comprehensive environmental study of Bull Run under the direction and supervision of the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation, or TDEC for short. The data from this study will help guide future decisions 
on how we continue to safely and securely manage coal ash at Bull Run. And those decisions will help determine whether we need to construct a new dry storage landfill. It's important, I think, to take a step back and explain what options are being considered when we talk about future decisions relating to Bull Run. The Environmental Protection Agency, or the EPA, under both the Obama administration and the Trump administration, has determined there are two equally protective methods for closing coal ash ponds and safely and securely storing coal ash depending on the existing characteristics of the site. The first of those is called a closure in place, and that keeps the coal ash in its current location while reinforcing the safety and stability of the site by removing water, constructing protective barriers when necessary, and sealing it with a cap that prevents water infiltration. The, section op the second option is closure by removal, which includes excavating the coal ash from its existing location. The excavated ash can be transported to either a dry storage landfill on TVA property next to the plant or off-site to a non-TVA owned property. Every site is unique, so decisions are site specific. The decision at Bull Run will be based on the scientific data, studies, and analysis specific to Bull Run under the supervision and direction of TDEC. The decision at Bull Run will not be based on what we're doing at other sites, like Allen, Gallatin, or John Sevier sites here in Tennessee, or at our Widows Creek or Colbert sites, for example, in North Alabama. For context, at Allen, we are um, closing by removing coal ash to an off-site location due to not having available and adjacent property uh, <clears throat> owned by TVA near the Allen facility. At Gallatin, we are closing by removing coal ash to a location that is on the Gallatin property. At our John Sevier plant in Rogersville, Tennessee, at our Widows Creek and Colbert plants in North Alabama, we use the closure in place method. Again, those decisions were made based on the science, the data, and the analysis of those five different sites. The results of the environmental studies being conducted under the supervision and direction of TDEC will determine if we close in place or close by removal at Bull Run. And if it is determined that we have to remove uh, the ash at Bull Run, we believe that constructing a new lined landfill adjacent to the plant is the least disruptive, least impactful solution for the community, eliminating approximately 100 truckloads a day on Edgemore Road for the next 10 to 20 years. Again, no decisions have been made to date. You might ask, though, why is there a proposal to construct a new dry storage landfill if you may not use it? And that would be a fair question. First, we began the TDEC permitting process back in 2013. At that time, the plant was going to be generating electricity for the long term, and we were anticipating needing new landfill storage for Bull Run coal ash. This plan, as you all probably know, changed last year when the decision was made by the TVA Board of Directors to close Bull Run in 2023. Today, we are still continuing the permitting process, even though we may not need the landfill because it would be irresponsible if we did not plan for every possible scenario. For example, as I mentioned a moment ago about Gallatin, it was determined that storing coal ash in an adjacent landfill on the Gallatin property was the best decision there. If, and again, that's a big if, the results of the comprehensive study we are conducting at Bull Run under the direction of TDEC leads us to that same solution, we will be prepared to move forward with constructing the proposed line landfill. And if this is the case, we want to make it very clear that TVA will only use it to store coal ash from Bull Run. We will not bring coal ash or any other material from anywhere else to the new landfill. And now if I could, I'd like to address what happens when Bull Run stops operating in 2023. And as I mentioned a few moments ago, TVA has been a part of this community for over 60 years, and we will continue to be a part of this community. 
Future uses of the site have not been determined. TVA will be working closely with the community through the elected officials and community leaders as we prepare for the future of the Bull Run site. The decommissioning process at Bull Run will begin shortly after the retirement of the Bull Run facility and it will last approximately six years. Generally, that process involves the removal of above ground structures that were associated with the fossil fuel generation and then below grade basements hoppers or bunkers uh, are either removed or filled with a compacted material to ensure suitability for reuse. For example, when Widow's Creek coal plant in North Alabama closed in 2015, TVA worked with community stakeholders to attract Google to the valley, bringing new jobs and opportunities. TVA facilitated the purchase of a portion of the Widow's Creek site for development into a Google data center, one of only eight in the United States and 14 worldwide. Google has stated that they were attracted to the valley because of the availability of land, water, labor, and clean renewable energy. TVA will conduct a necessary environmental review at Bull Run before beginning any decommissioning process and the public will have the opportunity to provide comments. Again, I wanna thank you all for your interest in the ongoing work at Bull Run. Uh, we certainly appreciate the opportunity to address any confusion about the proposed Bull Run landfill and more importantly, to listen to the comments of commission and the, the members of the public that are in attendance. While we believe the Jackson law is not applicable here, there are other opportunities for your input, and we would encourage you to participate in the TDEC permitting process. There will be opportunities to engage in that process and submit comments. And now, we are here again to listen to you, to listen to the comments from those in the audience. While we won't be able to answer all of the questions that you uh, may have of us, uh, you'll see us taking a bunch of notes tonight, and we commit to uh, responding the best way we can, Chairman. In closing, I do believe that it is important to restate a couple of things. We've been a part of this community for more than 60 years. We care about this community, and we will continue to be a good neighbor. Your safety, your family's safety, our employee's safety is our top priority. We are conducting a comprehensive study of Bull Run under the supervision and direction of TDEC. The results of this comprehensive study will determine future decisions at Bull Run, including if a new landfill must be built. And if a landfill must be built, TVA will use it to store only coal ash from Bull Run. TVA will not bring coal ash or any other material from anywhere else to the new site. And lastly, just a reminder that no decisions have been made up to this point about the future of the site. Thank you again and I look forward to hearing the other comments. Thank you, Bert. Are you uh, speaking for all of TVA then? Is that? That's correct, yes, okay. sir. And uh, if folks wanna get a hold of you or representatives of TVA that might not get to speak today in case that happens, is there a mechanism for that to happen? Yeah, we can certainly leave contact information if that would be helpful. That would be good. We'll put it in the record so the folks can have it. Uh, thank you, Bert. Thank you, Appreciate sir. your comments. Um, I'd like to add, Commissioner Robert Jamison, he's thank you for joining us, Commissioner. He represents the Clinton area. Um, next would be TDEC. Good evening. My name is Chuck Head. I'm with the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation. Work as an assistant commissioner for the department. With me tonight, I have uh, Rob Burnett over in the corner. Rob is the uh, permit engineer for the solid waste landfill permit application and Robert Wilkinson, who is our lead for the department for the oversight of the investigation and cleanup of the various TVA sites across the state. Uh, what I'd like to do is talk about two different things. The first one is just the landfill itself, and then follow up a little bit about the ongoing investigation at the TVA Bull Run plant. So uh, as uh, TVA stated earlier, uh, this landfill permit came to us several years ago and was submitted to us as a permit where they would store waste that's generated on the TVA Bull Run plant site at a new landfill at the facility. 
uh, the landfill was going to be designed to store between eight and nine million cubic yards of ash from the Bull Run plant that was submitted to us and we began the review process of that as we do with any other permit application. Um, we began the review of the permit application from the solid waste side looking at the site geology, engineering design and so forth. Uh, we also at this site uh, have a stream that would have to be altered to build a landfill that would hold that amount of material. So there was an ARAP application uh, that TVA applied for us, an aquatic resource alteration program permit, basically means to build a landfill big enough to hold that much material, they were gonna have to move part of the stream. And so we're in the process of reviewing that uh, concurrently. And we have a, a policy within the department that we track a landfill permit with the ARAP permit so that we make sure that we don't issue a landfill permit at a facility that needs an ARAP permit and the ARAP permit has not been issued because you can't construct a landfill uh, that, that needs a, a stream relocation without the ARAP permit. So we've been moving forward with time. TVA announced recently that they did not plan to uh, use the proposed landfill for new ash when, when they made the statement that they were going to uh, cease uh, operation at the Bull Run facility in 2023, that changed the uh, dynamics of the permit application. So as a part of the process that we've been going through with both the landfill and the ARAP, we put the uh, ARAP permit application out for public notice and comment. And we received two comments, I believe it was, during that public comment period that said, that specifically asked TDEC to think about this. Uh, TVA has made an announcement that uh, they do not plan to operate the Bullroom plan after 2023. Do you think you should issue that ARAP permit and allow the landfill to be constructed? Uh, as a department, we took that comment to heart because the original plan for the landfill was to handle ash that was generated new ash that was generated at the site, eight to nine million cubic yards. Uh, and now that has changed, and we do not know at this time uh, what will be, what would be placed into that landfill. So we have currently placed the landfill permit application on hold. We have provided TVA with a letter that asks them to do what's called an alternatives analysis on the site. And the reason for that is the, the landfill permit requires a relocation of a stream. Now that the TVA plan is not gonna be running past 2023, the question is, what is that additional landfill space gonna be used for? In our aquatic resource alteration permitting process, you have to do what's called an alternatives analysis and explain to us why you need uh, the size of landfill that you do and why you need to alter the stream. Uh, so right now that original premise of new ash going into the landfill has gone away and uh, we're, we're talking with TVA about how things will move forward. There's been some questions about the application of the Jackson Law to this site. Uh, in the, the, the Tennessee Solid Waste Management Act, there's a provision in the statute that basically says if an industry generates solid waste on site and disposes of it on site, the Jackson Law applies. Uh, I'm sorry? Well, the, the Jackson Law does not apply to this, or does apply to this site, thank you, because it's generated on the same site that it's gonna be disposed on. I apologize for that. Uh, there's also another part of the statute that talks about the Regional Salt Waste Authority, and they have uh, the ability to uh, review and approve landfill permits. But again, just like the Jackson Law, since it's the ash 
or waste that's going to be generated on the same site that's exposed, that does not apply as well. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that we got that statement out there so that there were questions later, we'll be glad to answer them about that. I did want to talk about the corrective action at the site. Uh, TDEC and TVA entered into a consent order for seven uh, plants across Tennessee that burn coal for power, uh, the Bull Run site being one of those. And in that consent order, TVA has agreed to go in and investigate the site and determine how much ash is stored there. We'll, we'll be looking at how deep is it, how wide is it, how tall is it, see how much is ash is there. We'll be analyzing the uh, groundwater in the area to see if there's contamination in the groundwater. We'll be looking at the stability of the site and any other potential uh, environmental problems that might be caused by the uh, CCR material that's there. It's, we're in the middle of the investigation process right now. Uh, we work with uh, TVA as they go out and perform the environmental investigation that they submitted a plan to us that we've approved, and so we monitor that, look at the work. At the end of that, TVA will submit to us what's called an environmental assessment report. In that environmental assessment report, it will stipulate in that report where the ash is, is there ash located in groundwater, is there groundwater contaminated by CCR materials, is there any potential stability problems at the site? The whole gamut of things that we would investigate. At the end of that process, we will review that and then we will come to the point of making a decision about corrective action at the site. And as the folks from TVA said earlier, there are a range of options that occur, it could, could occur at this site. Um, and they range from digging up the, the uh, CCR material and relocating it relocating it in another uh, landfill that's designed to meet specific standards uh, as a modern day landfill, to have a liner, leachate collection system, groundwater monitoring system, those things. There is the option of closing in place, which would mean the ash stays where it is with a, with a uh, cover on top and long-term groundwater monitoring. And then there are combinations of environmental uh, cleanup that are in the middle. They could remove part of the ash, dispose of it, and then cover the site. Uh, they may be required to do groundwater treatment. Uh, in any case where that happens, uh, once we uh, receive the uh, environmental investigation plan and uh, a corrective action plan is developed, that will be available for folks to make public no have an opportunity to provide comments on. Uh, it's a, it will be a fairly long process, uh, probably about two years out before we get to the point of a corrective action plan. So I would just like to offer tonight that I and the two gentlemen that are with me will be more than glad to answer any questions that you may have of us. And um, contact information, I can give that to you with a business card if that's okay. Absolutely. All right. <clears throat> thank you, sir. Hey, thank you, Chuck. We appreciate you and TDAC. <clears throat> For uh, being here in your comments, absolutely. Um, next, Mr. Mayor Warren Goot, sir, City of Oak Ridge. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here tonight and be able to uh, address you and the citizens of Anderson County, particularly our, our neighbors uh, in Claxton. Um, I want everyone to know that the, the city is also going to have a, a public hearing uh, on that issue. And I uh, also want to thank uh, the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation uh, for protecting our interests, not only uh, the city of Oak Ridge, but, but Anderson County in, in many forms and, and with many <laughs> Uh, many issues. I, I want to say on behalf of the city uh, that uh, we intend to stand side by side with our neighbors in Claxton, uh, our friends and neighbors 
in Anderson County uh, as we move forward to ensure that uh, all of our interests are protected, not only for those of us who are here today, or even for those who have just been born today, but for the generations of Anderson Countyans that will be coming forward. Uh, the Bull Run decision will have a major impact on this county, good or bad, uh, and um, that's why it's so important and that's why so many people uh, are here tonight. I'd be remiss if I didn't thank our friends at TVA for what they've done, not only for Anderson County, but for the Tennessee Valley. They have been uh, uh, true friends in economic development, uh, in flood control, uh, in energy savings, um, and other initiatives. And particularly here in Anderson County with regard to Norris Dam. And we all know what that history is and what a difference it's made in the lives of Anderson Countyans and, and, and in flood control. Uh, but again, this is a bigger issue uh, than just uh, flood control and power generation. Um, we, we are now talking about uh, closing a major steam plant and what the implications of that are both economically and with, with the environment. In that regard, I, I must say, I found it interesting this morning when I went out to my mailbox and got my newspapers. The Oak Ridge, uh, and there's an ad from the Tennessee Valley Authority quoting an update from TVA on Bull Run Fossil Plant for the citizens of Anderson County. And it basically states what they told the city of Oak Ridge 18 months ago. And some of you were there at that, at that meeting when, for the first time, uh, Anderson County officials, as well as the city of Oak Ridge, had the opportunity to talk to TVA officials. And tonight, Mr. Robinson, and, and he is a good man, uh, and he represents, uh, again, the TVA and the citizens of the Valley very well. But as it relates to what they, and I say they, what TVA is going to agree to do in the future, whether it's this ad, whether it's conversations, and I know members of this commission have been very active in their discussions with TVA. And in fact, I've had conversations with Chairman Lyash, who is another good man and a man of integrity, uh, and, and I'm glad he's where he is. But nonetheless, we deserve, when I say we, all of the citizens of Anderson County, indeed, the citizens of Tennessee, deserve to have TVA state and sign what they say their obligations are and what they're going to do. It really does nothing to run an ad in the newspaper in terms of what they promise to do. And I hope going forward, we'll have a memorandum of understanding or other contractual agreements uh, that uh, are negotiated by the county law director and others. Um, it's interesting also in terms of what we've been promised up to this point in terms of information. City of Oak Ridge, in addition to having an interest economically in what happens to the Bull Run steam plant and to the impact it has on Claxton, 
But that property is right on the Clinch River. That's the main water source for our city. And today, even though we've been promised information regarding their testing of their monitoring wells, we haven't received them. And based on what I thought I heard from the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conversation, they haven't received them either. Again, it's time for TVA to share their information with us. And the reason for that is this. Faces change. Management changes. Elected officials change. Board members of TVA change. And if it's not in writing, it doesn't mean anything going forward. And it's time, it is time, regardless of what TVA's intentions are with regard to Bull Run, to share their information that they have, not to dump it, not to dump it on a website with 2,000 pages and say, oh, well, it's there if you just took the time to go find it. I would submit to you that really none of us have the resources or the time to do that. And I would humbly and respectfully ask TVA to do better in that regard. Again, I appreciate them. I appreciate what they've done. But this is a new issue. We've never had a steam plant close in Anderson County. And we sure want to be that we know what's going to happen, what their plans are, and what the impacts are, regardless of whether they keep the current landfill open, whether they extend the landfill, whether they keep it where it is. We deserve to have that information. And again, I want to thank you for this hearing. <clears throat> Mayor Gooch, thank you for those kind words. And uh, as one representative of this body, I think we can say that we appreciate the working relationship we have with the city of Oak Ridge and the city council. And uh, working together gets things done. And uh, I appreciate the relationship we have with the city of Oak Ridge for sure. Next will be the citizens. You'll have <clears throat> three minutes. And again, folks, if you do not get the chance to speak tonight, we're going to do this again because obviously some folks are going to be left out, I'm afraid. But uh, don't get discouraged. This is just the first of many as far as I'm concerned. And uh, I appreciate the transparency. I appreciate the discussion from TVA, TDAC. Uh, now, uh, do you have something you would like to share? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I would ask that you um, yield to Chris Weatherall on this uh, for a possibility of nine to 10 minutes. He's provided technical expertise to the county. Uh, he's four decades of experience in this area and uh, I'd like for him yep. to at least. Uh, well, if, if he could just hold on, I mean, we're 45 minutes in and the people that came haven't had a chance to speak and, and we can certainly come back to him if that's all right with you, Jay. But just to any time. Yeah. I'd like for you uh, to but I'd, I'd really like for the people to start talking because, you know, they, they took time out of their day. And I, no disrespect, certainly would love to have you speak. I think He's the gentleman, here too. yeah, he spoke before at some of these other. Mm -hmm. uh, so at this time, any citizens like to get up, please come to the microphone, state your name, your address, and. Uh, Say what, say what you like to say about this Bull Run TVA power Yes. And don't forget to sign in, because if you make your comments and you're not signed in, they're not going not gonna to be taken. Uh, yes. 
Well, go ahead, state your name. Jason Williams. And, and your address, sir? I live in Claxton. Okay. I'm a Claxton community, okay. but I'm also a coal ash worker. And um, I'm not going to keep a lot of your time up because I've been to these meetings and said a lot, of a lot of things. But what I suggest for the Claxton community to do is if they start hauling to that landfill, there's no way to keep the dust down. I've been doing this for 10, 12 years, and there's no way to do it. You know, I mean, I've worked at DOE. I've hauled some of the hottest stuff you could haul and not have a bit of leakage or no worries. I hauled ash for five years. I got cancer, lung disease. It's dangerous. So, you know, you need to look at the symptoms, you know, research the symptoms of coal ash exposure, you know, the community, or your kids, you know, your, your, your grandparents, and your animals, all of it, you know, because it's dangerous, and there's no way to keep that, the dust down. You, they're talking about running 100 trucks a day. That's seven trucks running 10 hours a day, depending on what kind of trucks they run, all right? I've hauled 100 loads a day. I've been a part of 100 loads a day. I also stayed longer than I should just to keep the coal ash wet so people wouldn't get sick. I mean, a lot of people know me here that, that I've worked with know I'm that way. I, you know, I left almost a year ago at Bull Run, and I'm, I won't go back. I, I'll not haul no more. I'm done. But they need to really look at that, you know, find another way if they're going to haul it and dry stack it, it needs to be done in super sacks or something like that and stored in super sacks like you do hazardous waste because it's what it is. And it needs to be done that way then I could see I could see it better of being safer for the community. Yeah, it takes a little bit more money, a little bit more time, but also it helps people like me understand it better. So that's all I need to say. Jason, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. appreciate thank it. You. Uh, <laughs> your name, sir? My name is uh, Harold Ballou. I live on 186 Henderson Bend Road. You can see the smokestacks out my window across the water. So I, uh, I'm a concerned citizen. Now, I don't know what the solution is going to be. But my problem is, again, stated tonight, we had a representative from TVA talking about being good neighbors. If I understand the reason for this meeting this evening, it's ostensibly because the commissioners represent the citizens. And the commissioners want to have a part in the say of what happens at Bull Run, specifically the CCRs. TVA comes in and says the act does not allow you to do that because the act specifies that you only have some input if they're bringing some coal ash from outside Bull Run. Now, the point is this. Good neighbors don't parse words. Good neighbors want the same thing for all the community. They want this to be resolved in a healthy, wholesome way that doesn't look first at the bottom line of a giant corporation known as the TVA, but it looks at the bottom line of the men, women, and children that live here. And you are the bulwark, you men and women, stand between us and them, this big giant, and they don't want to hear from you, which means they don't want to hear from us. And that troubles me. As an aside, the TVA has already expressed, though he said they haven't yet, they've expressed a desire to leave the five million tons where, the, where it's at at Bull Run, not move it, in an online clay pit, which is the same kind of pit at the Gallatin Fossil Plant where they agreed to remove 12 million tons of this stuff. In our situation, our coal plant is much closer to the water than in Gallatin or the Allen Fossil Plant, both of which they've agreed to remove all this waste. And finally, I don't get this. The CCRs are valuable. I discovered <laughs> In America, 40% of all drywall manufactured in America uses synthetic gypsum, which is one of the byproducts. 
some of the best cement in America for roads and dams and so forth comes in part from this CCNRs. Why don't they just give it away and let them pay for hauling it away? No, 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 no. Don't be fooled. Good neighbors care about the person next door. And in my mind, the TVA, if they want to show they care, first of all, they should be inclusive of our government representatives. And secondly, they need to be more transparent. I want to thank you all for trying to do the right thing on our behalf and standing up to the Goliath. And I believe we're going to beat them at least to the point where they're going to wake up one day and say, we have to do the right thing. We have to protect the environment, the people that live here, the people that recreate here. I thank all of you for doing that on our behalf, and thank you for the time. Thank you, Hal, for your comments. Ladies before men. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'm Joanne Johnson. I live at 403 Orchard Knob Road in Clinton. I also am a former property owner in Oak Ridge just until November of this past year. My concern will uh, begin with what Mayor Gooch brought up, and I want to thank the people from Oak Ridge being here. I was really concerned when I read in the newspaper that our city manager in Oak Ridge, Mr. Watson, said that he was going to leave the responsibility of this, which is extremely important, to the Anderson County Commission. And I thank you for that. But he said that Oak Ridge had other important things to do. Nothing could be more important than this environmental issue, as the previous speaker said, to our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren. We, not, we already have an environmental problem in Oak Ridge as a result of our Manhattan Project, which is probably the reason that many of us are here. Although, I do remember TVA bringing electricity to the valley when I would come to visit my grandparents. So let's talk about the water issue. The water for the city of Oak Ridge, the withdrawal uh, station, I'll call it a station, is located a little ways before you get to the dam below the bull, uh, below the bull Run steam plant. The things that have not been said out loud yet are, are the current pits and ponds safe? Do they leak water? If they're not safe, then that says to me, that's, oh, that's what TVA is planning to do with this 60 acres. They need 60 acres of land, maybe, because they're going to have to move the ash. Oh, and I read in the paper that the ash that we have is toxic and cannot be sold thus far. But we have got to find out can we leave the ash that we currently have where it is in those ponds and pits, or does it have to be moved? That would be a safety issue, and then we have to think about what happened in Kingston. When it rains a lot, which it rains a lot in this area, water comes down, and it's, you know, and we may have flooding just like they had. And we have to make sure that the water supply from the Bull Run steam plant all the way to Chattanooga is safe, not only now, but for the future of all of our generations. We have to think about it. It's as important as all of the nuclear radiation problems that we've had in Oak Ridge and what we do with nuclear waste. We can't make a mistake. Surely we can learn from what happened in Kingston. And I think that's one of the reasons that everyone is afraid, because of the health and the safety of the citizens and the workers that are going to have to address this. I also think that TVA needs to get started in planning. Surely they've been doing some planning. I read that you, Mr. Wandell, found out about this plan in February of 2019. That's been one year and no planning yet. 
Anyway, I'm really glad that all of you are going to work together, and I hope the city of Oak Ridge will join you in, that, in this project because it's important to everyone. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. <laughs> What's that? Uh, Ms. Commissioner. Johnson, Ms. Johnson, I just want to address the fact Oak Ridge is standing firm with us. Okay. That was what uh, Mayor Gooch was here to say. Good. And uh, so is Mark Watson. So I just wanted to make that point. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Denberg. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Next, sir. Okay. My name is Albert Good. I'm a retired environmental engineer. I spent 20 years working on remediation for Department of Energy of radioactive and hazardous waste. And uh, I helped do some of the design on the filled coal ash pond and stopping that from, uh, uh, well, ta taking care of some structural problems as well as some leachate problems. And I am leaning without having access to any of the data, any of the uh, site plans, geology, hydrology. I'm leaning towards closure in place for a couple of reasons. And the biggest reason is you're not moving a lot of coal ash and Another reason is cost, but there are some caveats to closure in place that I would like to propose and make sure that they're considered in the feasibility study for uh, the closure in place option. And this is something that worked on a radioactive, well, on several hundred acres of radioactive waste landfills in Melton Valley at ORNL. And those landfills were designed with a leachate collection detection system that surrounds the landfill and keeps leachate from going into the river. Uh, in addition to the leachate collection, there is a cutoff wall, an impermeable barrier, that keeps water from the river from backing up into the landfill. In addition to that, there is a need for a trust fund that's established for perpetual maintenance because as you collect the leachate, as you maintain the landfill to make sure that the new cap, the I, I assume it's a RICRA type multi-layer cap, um, that that cap is maintained so it'll function as designed. And um, also you're gonna need to be able to operate the leachate collection and presumably a treatment plant so that the leachate that you collect, you separate the contaminants from the clean water. The clean water, after monitoring, can go back into the river and the concentrated contaminants will be set for appropriate disposal at some landfill, presumably off-site, depending on the analysis of uh, the constituents in the leachate. So um, those are, yeah, the, there are some things that are above and beyond what's in a typical RICRA cap design. And I spent, you know, about four hours preparing a uh, conceptual report and I left a copy of it and it needs several months with a half a dozen engineers and scientists paying attention to incorporate some of these concepts into the closure in place scenario and determine if it will work. I, I like my ideas, but uh, I can't guarantee if it'll work until some studies based on real data are performed. So uh, I just like to leave it up to TVA to consider it and hope that if you are gonna consider a closure in place landfill, you consider the correct designs that will make sure that the waste isn't going anywhere. On the filled coal ash pond, we put an awful lot of riprap to make the existing dam come up to modern dam standards, which it did not <coughs> do. The engineers working for the Department of Energy said, you're getting seepage here, you better do something about it. Well. DOE listened and they did something about it. They fixed the ash pond to make sure it wouldn't leak. Another thing they did at that project was put in a constructed wetland and that wetland was designed to 
take any seepage that came through the dam or any of the water that came over the spillway, the emergency spillway, and the wetland would actually treat the waste, wastewater, and uh, clean it up to a certain extent. I have not seen the data. I don't know if that was successful or not, but it's something that's worth considering, and that might require some maintenance also. But these are some ideas that belong in a feasibility study for the closure in place option. I believe it can work. I can believe that you can keep, collect all the, collect all the leachate that's going to be generated uh, for now and for the future and take care of that. So those are, those are my comments. Mr. Good, thank you for your comments. I've got your email <laughs> and telephone number and I appreciate your comments. Thank you very much. And I Appreciate the hard copy there. Um, who we have next, sir? Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Kent Nano um, uh, from the Sierra Club. I'm the political chair of the uh, Harvey Broom Group here, the Sierra Club's local group. And uh, the Sierra Club is proud to be part of this process. And I want to thank the commission for having these detailed meetings. Um, and the Sierra Club's also used the resources of the organization to mobilize people in the area to come here and participate in these discussions. Um, I just want to re reiterate something that Mr. Robinson from uh, TVA just said, which is that what's decided here in Bull Run will influence how coal ash is dealt with in other areas of the TVA service area. So that adds a little weight to our deliberations here. What we're really doing is we're all meeting as a community and trying to figure out how to do coal ash right. It's awful, toxic stuff. And that process needs to involve everyone. And I think that the criticisms that have been leveled, which we support, are that TVA needs to be a good neighbor. TVA needs to sign a memor memorandum of understanding and put its name on the dotted line about what it's going to do. And the people in this room need to be part of the decision-making process. Our organization supports them in that. Thank you. Thank you, Kent, for your comments. <laughs> yes, sir. My name is uh, Doug Colclasier, a uh, resident of Anderson County, 103 Monticello Road, Oak Ridge. Uh, one. Uh, Doug, did you sign in by chance? I haven't yet. Okay. Let me. Uh, let me I'm gonna let you sign in. Okay. Yeah. Is there another sign-in sheet? Go ahead, Doug. Yeah. Okay. Uh, while you're signing, Leo York, why don't you come on up, sir? Uh, my name is Leo York. I am a resident of Claxton, Tennessee. Mr. Wondell is my representative of that home, Chuck. Uh, as far as the coal ash storage uh, facility in, uh, there at the Bull Run Steam Plant, I am in, very much in favor of capping and leaving in place. I am not in favor at all of, uh, of opening up a new landfill uh, uh, there along Worthington Branch. If the plant is going to be closing in uh, 2023, I think there's plenty of storage space already there. I see no reason uh, to expand um, or add an additional landfill site um, when I think there's plenty of storage there. The plant is not in operation that much that often. When it is on, I can see it from my house. I know it's on. And uh, well, they did haul in some more coal today, but um, since the plant is going to be closing in 2023, I just can't see that there's any reason or any need for an additional uh, landfill. I think that land could be better served uh, <coughs> by allowing, uh, hopefully in the future, that land go back to the to Anderson County and maybe the Anderson County school system, and that could be an excellent site for a new uh, Claxton school or middle school. So I'm already looking forward to that. And as far as the plant where the, uh, where the uh, steam plant itself sits, that could be cleared up and uh, with the railroad tracks, um, Pellissippi Parkway being nearby, 
and potential site for barge traffic, I think that would be an excellent industrial site for uh, Anderson County. So clean up the site, don't expand uh, the landfill. Thank you. Thank you, Leo, for your comments. <laughs> Sorry, Doug. Yes, sir. Thank you for doing that. Uh, representative on commission in our district is Steve Mead. I uh, appreciate the commission's interest in this and willingness to help support all the citizens of Anderson County. Uh, if off-site becomes, you know, the logical option based on the hazards of the existing site, it, it need not be trucks on Edgemore Road. There's barge access, there's rail access. In fact, even as we s speak here tonight, trains come full of coal and leave empty, going back to the mines in Wyoming. Wyoming is an arid climate, suitable for storage of material of this nature. It seems like the off-site option need not be nearly as expensive as it's being portrayed as. Thank you for the opportunity to provide input. Good comments. Thank you, Doug. <laughs> yes, sir. Your name? Uh, my name is Zach Vaughn. I live at uh, 410 Edgemore Road. I'm uh, 29, so I think I'm the oldest guy in here <laughs> by looking around. Uh, real quick, uh, I just want to say uh, I have been fortunate enough to go a lot of places without people like TVA. I don't think we realize how, you know, what they do for our infrastructure. So very appreciative for that. Uh, I, I purchased 26 acres on Edgemore Road about three years ago. Uh, I've been offered double the value that I paid for the property. I've been offered, I've been approached by developers. Uh, it's not, you know, interesting to me. I want a place my kids can grow up. I'm a little nervous up here talking for all you adults. You have to give me a second. You're doing fine. You're uh, doing fine. But, uh, you know, I want a place my kids can grow up. Um, you look at 2019, what come out about the arsenic and the lithium at Bull Run, at the Kingston plant, you know, the, un, the unfortunate part of your position and TVA's position is we all expect perfection. And... It's hard to get perfection uh, when you talk about something like this. So as time goes on, we will discover new things. Technology will grow. We'll find out that uh, maybe what we were doing today is not a good move. Some of you in here probably remember when seat belts weren't mandatory. Times have changed, and you know, as I said, things will go on. Uh, I run an excavator, a bulldozer. If you've ever dug, you know water will <laughs> It'll go anywhere. Last week, with all the rain, I rushed out to three houses, dug their footer drains out, and I watched water run out of a four-inch pipe that you would have thought there was a, a water line on the other side of it for hours, hours and hours and hours. You don't understand how many springs are in that ridge. Some of your houses are sitting on so much water, you ain't got a clue about it. I'm not saying they don't know what they're doing because that guy got up here and he's substantially smarter than I am. And I know these guys are. But as I said, we see what's going on with old plants. We see what's going on, you know, with the things that are uh, there now. So what's not to say in 30 years when I'm your age, my kids are standing here and they're fighting the same thing and I'm sick or they're sick, you know, and so. Uh, like I said, I don't have a whole lot to say, mainly because I don't know a whole lot about it, but uh, I did think it's important. I don't see anyone here close to my age, so I thought it was important we had at least one millennial up here, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but I appreciate you guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Zach. Yes, ma'am. My name's Sharon Todd. I'm definitely not a millennial, but I'm a lot. <laughs> sure you are. <laughs> I'm a lifetime resident of the Claxton community, and as a resident, uh, I do appreciate what TVA has done for the community. I have their power lines across my property. I have their water lines across my property, or actually Hallsdale, Powell, and West Knox's water lines. But that's being said, the location for the proposed storage site is not appropriate for storage. It is over karst terrain, and as that gentleman was, say, was saying, there are springs, it's not stable, and we had a seismic event here a couple weeks ago 
that was significant enough, it triggered the alarms for the turbines in the steam plant. So to put a storage facility on that sort of terrain, there, there's a cave on the ridge, there's a cave on the next ridge where I live, Spring Hill Cave, and then on the next ridge, you've got Cherokee Caverns. Those caves were formed millions of years ago by the Clinch Ocean. We call it the Clinch River now. And I believe that's one reason they're trying to move Worthington Branch to get away from that karst formation. You cannot, put sto you cannot store that on an unsound place like that. It will, you're moving it up the river, up half a mile up the road, and it will leach into the river faster than it's leaching now. So that's all I'm going to say, and I appreciate everybody having the meetings and listening to our concerns. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Thank you for coming. <laughs> uh, who's Jimmy Villarreal? Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, Sharon, uh, is there a Mr. Todd here? Or? I'll speak next time. Yes, sir. Got gotcha. you. Okay. And uh, Chris Weatherall? Yes, sir, Chris. See, it worked out right, Chris. I think that's just perfect. So I'm Chris Weatherall. I live at 120 Graceland Road in Oak Ridge. I'm a 25 plus year resident of Oak Ridge. Uh, came down here from Maine. And uh, I spent most of my career in the field cleaning up hazardous and dangerous and toxic and poisonous and radiological circumstances. And this situation kind of reminds me like that story about the elephant and the three blind people where they were all touching different parts of the elephant and trying to describe what it was that was an elephant. So I think everybody's going about this in good faith. And I think the TVA has a huge, proud history of water power, non-fossil fuel power, and they get kind of sucked into this coal thing. If coal was a technology today, nobody in their right mind would buy it. If I give you 100 pounds of some fuel and you're going to throw 30% of it away, 30 pounds of it away, would you do that? If I gave you a gallon of gasoline and you threw 30% 30 30 of it away, nobody would do that but we're stuck where we are. And uh, just like another waste, which I actually removed literally millions of pounds of, which they classified as a special waste, which was asbestos. This material, if any other industry generated it, plastics industry, shoe industry, farming, name any other industry that would generate this waste and you wouldn't call it a hazardous waste. What we have here is a political waste classification. And so I really want to emphasize the point that we need political action to address a political situation. This is not science, because combustion fuel residue is a very special classification that lets things totally slide in this area. It's definitely poisonous and toxic. It definitely varies a lot if you get oil from Venezuela or Saudi Arabia. They have all kinds of different levels of vanadium and other things. Coal is a natural product. It doesn't come in a pure form. So you have a, a changing or dynamic waste that you're throwing into a changing dynamic environment. And when I see these tests that they're doing, the tests are extremely accurate. We used to do radon testing, asbestos testing, all kinds of testing. I worked on uh, recovery of a copper mine in Blue Hill, Maine, beautiful town. And they drill $50,000 holes every so often. So you have a choice of how many $50,000 holes do you want to drill? And so they space them so far apart. Well, that mine went bust, and I cleaned it up because the mine, when it went into the ground, seven to 900 feet underground, the ore was really like ribbon candy, and the ore mining machines going straight through diluted the ore so it wasn't worth mining. And they spent God only knows how many millions to make that mistake. So you have accuracy of tests, but there's another factor, which is the factor of order of confidence. And that is not a word that I have heard yet, is the order of confidence. So we can have very accurate testing but you do not have, an, you can have a 99% everybody certified microscopy looking at this, the electron microscope.
but you have an order of confidence. You can have a super accurate test in only a 5% order of confidence. And the order of confidence has to do with how you're dressing the dynamics of the environment. And all of these reports and studies that I've seen right now are using backwards projections of rainfall, backwards projections. We have a, an environment that's getting more extreme. If you look around the country, the United States, and around the world, you're now seeing earthquakes around dam sites because of the drastically different fluctuations in water. The dam is like this, and that pressure is trillions of pounds on the earth. When it goes up and down slowly, the plates in the earth get a chance to respond. When it goes up and down quickly, just look up earthquakes for dams in China, and Europe, wherever. And this environment, you have high fluctuations in water. Tr treatment plants all over the country exceed their licenses because they get super amount of rainfall coming in, and it overtops, and all the human waste goes out into the river. This is a common occurrence. But if you look at these kinds of statistics, you will see that how degraded the order of confidence is going forward when you're projecting it backwards. So what I had proposed several times, and I don't, I'm not in that business, I have no financial interest in this, I don't know any property near there, but we worked with a project which I believe was even a, a, a demonstration site, I thought in Kingston, of freeze technology. And I've mentioned this to TVA engineers, I mentioned it to a hydrogeologist from the TVA, never heard of it, never heard of it. The Hoover Dam was built with this. When they couldn't shore up the side of the Hoover Dam, they put pipes in the ground and froze the ground, and that's how they built Hoover Dam. You, you, it doesn't work in the desert because there's no water. Now, maybe it won't work here, but I haven't seen anybody take a serious look of stabilization in place immediately by freeze wall all around this. There's plenty of water there, there's plenty of power. Usually the problem is bringing in diesel generators. Once you get the ground frozen, it doesn't take much energy to keep it frozen. And as far as coal ash goes, I have cleaned coal ash ponds. I used to have a fleet of vacuum trucks, so not even open hauling. And I sent uh, Jay a picture of an open uh, railroad car train. You go look it up on the internet, and the amount of dust that comes off of just regular whole crushed coal. And uh, Central Maine Power, I cleaned ash ponds for them. The minute, the minute that that dries out, they call it fly ash for a reason, because it's the part that flies. And it, moving it in any way, shape, or form, there's literally no safe way to move it. The minute that it dries out, it immediately wants to go up in the air. And especially with children, the lung surface area of a child is much larger than adult. So they're closer to the ground. That's why we banned lead in gasoline. I used to take asbestos testing in schools, and, the, and the, the people would come in and say, oh, you can't have the monitor up there because the Federal Register says it's supposed to be 52 inches off the ground. So look at the population of the people that uh, occupy this kindergarten. Mr. Weatherall, I've done, I think, the two for sure, three-minute spans. Okay. And, 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 and I wanted to give you the time, but and I appreciate your knowledge on all those other areas, but what we are here to do tonight is discuss Bull Run steam plants specifically. And any ideas you have, obviously put them in writing, email, uh, but we, we're interested. Right. I don't well, want my, you to My feel idea in conclusion is simply that you need to consider this as a fluctuating dynamic environment that's changing in the future and in place is best, in my view, but Take a look at something like freeze technology. Look at some other alternatives than this pick and shovel, haul and dump or cover. There are other ways to do it. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, two more? Okay. Who, who are they? I'm sorry. Thank you for pointing it out. What's the... Yeah, come on up. You're good. You're good. We'll get to the next one. Uh, Richard Hawkins, uh, live in Ozell Lane in Claxton since 1967. <clears throat> I appreciate TVA, appreciate all they've done, appreciate the commission, appreciate all you guys are trying to do. Uh, I don't know anything about leaching. I don't know anything about freezing. What I do know is I'd like it all hauled off. Uh, I don't want any of it. That way we 
and all of our environmental studies, we invent uh, anything unforeseen in the future, it's not ours to worry with. Uh, I know that they've hauled it off in uh, Kingston. I know that Oak Ridge hauls off environmental. I would like this to be hauled off as well. If any of you have ever tried to get out on Edgemore Road between four and seven every afternoon, I can't imagine what adding truck traffic to that would be. But if it comes that we have to have a landfill, I propose that the TVA builds a separate road to stay off Edgemore. Uh, anyway, uh, I appreciate TVA, I appreciate the commission, and I hope we all can work together to find a solution. Thank you. Thank you, Richard, for coming. Thank you for your comments. What's the name? I'll yell it out there. Daniel. Yes, sir, here he is. Hey, how you doing? Good, sir. Your uh, name? You got Donnie Owenby. That's yes, my name. Hey, Donnie, how are you, sir? I'm fine, Tracy. Uh, I'd just like to get some facts straight, okay? I mean, I heard conflicting stories here in the, in the introductory period <coughs> there. So when did they first make application for the permit? 2013, is that right? And that's 2019, 2020. All right. Uh, now, have they been granted a permit to uh, to construct this landfill because it was TVA's intention, I believe, that it would be amiss not to? Is that just your stand? Mr. Owen, just if you could address the chair. And well, do, I, they, do they have a permit? Do they to, currently have a permit to construct that? Based on my understanding, they do not have a permit yet. They have applied just in case TDEC comes back with their findings uh, and they might ask them to, to go with that process. I think TVA, from what I understand, is trying to uh, lay the foundation. Should that have to happen, then they'll have the pieces in place for the permits and things. But it hasn't been issued and approved to put the landfill in, and I'll let TDEC address that. Is that right, Mr. Head? Okay. And how, how um, ultimately, who is the deciding body? Who's the deciding person? Or uh, and I, I, Will it be the county commission? Oh, well, no. Uh, okay. Hey, <laughs> I, oh, I wish it would. I mean, we could fix hey, this tonight. That's not <laughs> we'll funny, pass the resolution boys. so fast to make your head spin. <laughs> I'm saying I, I, I'm, I've got a good sense of humor, but what I'm getting at is who's, gonna, who's the big dog? That's what well, I want to know. Well, I mean. Who's the big dog? Who is the person or the body that's going to say you can construct this or you cannot? TDEC's going to do that. Is that correct? Okay. So they do not have a permit at this time. And the, they're going to close the plant down in three years. During that time, do they have the, the facilities right now to store that ash? I think Mr. York has indicated that they do have the, the needed capacity to store that. Would that be correct? Um, you can answer right there on your microphone, Chuck, if you like. Thank you. It's our understanding, that being the Department of Environment and Conservation, that since the TVA plant at Bull Run is running intermittently, that they have the capacity to handle the ash that they're generating now through closure in 2023. So my next question then is, what is the intention to do with that property afterwards? I mean, we're going to make a park out of it or build a school? You know, what I'm getting at is... We need answers, gentlemen. You know what? When you shine a light on a cockroach, it runs. Now, if you run when people go shining a light on you, you're a cockroach, okay? But if you have got something in your heart that you believe in and that you think that this is the best for everybody, then stand up and be accounted for. The scripture says, count yourselves as men, and that does mean ladies too because you, the spirit has no gender. So, all I'm getting at is, this body represents the citizens of Anderson County, okay? And we're all for commerce. Look here, Leo proposed a pretty good deal there, you know, use that. So we're all for commerce. But what I want, sorry, what I want is to be straightforward, and if it's going to close in three years, my brother, you know, then what are we going to do with that property afterwards? You guys have already bought it. You bought it years ago and you applied for the permit in 2013. 
That's all I'm getting at, fellas and ladies. That's all I'm getting at, you know? Let's do what's right here, but let's, let's shine it out in the light. Let's get it right out in the light and make sure that everything is done in the light. Okay? That's all I'm saying. So they do not have a permit right now. They do not have a permit, and it's under the direct, it's under the ins inspection or whatever of TDEC, and their determination then will. And TDEC is the one who will determine whether or not this will be used to store coal ash. Is that right, sir? That's pretty close to a yes or a no. It, it, it is. I just want to clarify. They, have, they, do have an, they do have a permit for their existing landfill. They've applied for a permit for a new landfill. Across the road. They do not have that. Right. At the end of the day, TDEC and TVA are investigating the site to determine what type of cleanup needs to be conducted there. And we will use the information from that investigation to determine the corrective action that's required. Hold on. But before, but before a final decision is made, there'll be an opportunity for public notice and comment for folks to see what has been found and receive ideas from them. Okay. Now, now you're talking about concerning the one across the street. Because we know they've already got that one now on this side. <coughs> they've, they've already got that, man. No, no, sir, what I'm talking about is the ash that's currently disposed at the current landfill. Right. So but what I'm saying, we're talking about the one across the street, the 100 acres. That yeah, there's, no, there's been no permit issue for the one across the street right. on the corner of New Henderson. But TVA didn't buy that to turn it into Disneyland. No. You know. No. So, I mean, you know, let's be real. Let's just do it out in the open, and let's be honest with each other. Let's be honest okay. with each other. The and if we want to turn it into something down there, it'll kill everybody to say it. I won't kill everybody. But if they don't, if we don't want to do that, then let's say, no, I don't want to kill nobody. Thank you, Mr. Owen B. For Have a great I day. Appreciate your comments. <laughs> Another speaker. Yes, sir. Your name? Yes, sir. Uh, Joel Hewitt. I'm a citizen of Oak Ridge in Anderson County. Uh, I very much thank the last speaker for his questions. This is a very complicated issue. There are many questions. Uh, my statement is I would recommend to the commission that it ask of TVA uh, if this landfill is a contingency and just-in-case scenario uh, to ask TVA to, within a reasonable time frame, identify for you any and all instances in which uh, the TVA board has either approved a major decision, whether to build a new generation asset or close a new generation asset, and TVA has continued uh, requesting and pursuing a permit that may be no longer applicable um, in its long history. And then I also think uh, it seemed to me in the statement that it was suggested that they would permit the landfill uh, just in case a bull run is, is, is reactivated. Uh, I would also recommend that the commission ask TVA to identify any times in which the TVA board has voted to, again, build, close a major piece of infra infrastructure, and then within a limited time frame, maybe five years, has reversed itself. Uh, if there is indeed the possibility that Bull Run may be reactivated. Thank you. Thank you, Joel, for your comments. <laughs> Louise, hey, it, let's, it, thank you. I'd like, uh, Louise, I apologize. I Where thought your I? name was checked off and that was my mistake. Go ahead. I'm, I am Louise McKellen. I live at 35 Riverside Drive in Oak Ridge. I live maybe, maybe a mile from that silo that I see every day when I leave my house. I also see the river down the other way. And I'm worried, <laughs> but um, I also serve as the County Commissioner's ADA Oversight Committee Chair. And I have questions about what is already happening at um, the site on Ismore Road. There is a playground, there is a ball field, 
and there is a humidity center. And I'm worried about ash and how that might expose the kids who are playing in the playground, their parents and the ball fan. But my major question that I have not uh, had an answer to is that the Humanity Center, as all of you know, we did an ADA survey, not only of all our buildings, but our services. One of our services that they have to do is provide for elections. The Clinton Community Center is owned by TMA, and it is not ADA compliant. I want to know, and it is a public site, I want to know when they are going to deal with the very steep map and the door handles and the parking now, which, which is totally is, is sufficient. And um, the uh, handlebars um, for that ramp. I hate going to meetings now because the ramp is so steep. And oftentimes, people are parking in front of the ramp. So I want to know what the man is going to make this plan any complaint or are they going to tear it down for the landfill? Thank you. Thank you, Louise. Appreciate all you do. <laughs> okay, we're going to do one more speaker, yes, sir, unless there's someone else, but we're going to try to wrap up because we got. Our law director is going to make some comments and exhibits, and then we'd like to make a few comments ourselves. Any questions? And then we'll end the meeting and try to get done before we get into our regular meeting, which will be starting at 6. Yes, sir. Your name? Yes, I'm Gray Dean. I'm a resident of Oak Ridge. And I'd like to thank you guys for having the hearing today. I really appreciate it. And I also will admit that the TVA has certainly transformed the valley, and it's transformed it in, in a myriad of ways, some of which are, are profoundly wonderful and some of which are not so profoundly wonderful. And I think this is a case in point. And I think there's an environmental justice issue going on here as well. Uh, TVA is, uh, built, has traditionally built its plants in small communities, uh, small powerless communities, and they're going to leave their waste here in a small powerless community. And I, uh, I'd like to uh, just state that I am a geologist by training. And uh, really, the rocks there are not preferential for putting any sort of landfill in. And so we have uh, waste pits that are legacy waste pits that are right now leaking into the Clinch River. Uh, this is what's happening. So we know that there is a tendency for these pits to leak. Uh, they will over time, in many cases, that, that are uh, unforeseen to us. Uh, so we can't plan for the future. Uh, we know then that uh, the rocks themselves probably aren't suitable for putting a new landfill in. And I, I would. Uh, uh, Profit, profit, uh, or we'll just suggest to you guys that really the, the way to uh, uh, address this situation is the total removal of the waste. And uh, uh, TVA has, is a corporation. They have a corporate problem of ash, and how they're addressing it is to piecemeal it into each small community and make each small community accept this waste when, in fact, we power the entire state and region. And so there needs to be a regional solution to the ash there, and TVA needs to restore the rivers back and not even think about destroying another stream uh, needlessly uh, and impact the quality of life for all of us here. And I thank you again. Thank you for your time. Yes.
again, for any of you that have questions, you can certainly submit those uh, in the public notice. There's a website or email address. It's TVA. What, Jay, do you know off the top of your head? TVA permit at aclawdirector.com. AC AC so feel free to make your comments there, and those will be tabulated as well. Go ahead, Jay. Did you? Yes, sir. Yep. Uh, the agenda for today's meeting is one. Notice of public hearing is two. The TDAC document review summary we see this morning from TDAC is three, and anybody that wants to see these, we'll have them on the website in the next, uh, give us four or five days to get them on there. When the transcript has been prepared, it'll take her a few weeks. We'll also put that on the county's website for you. Um, a letter from Mr. Lyash, he's the president of TDA, addressing all the questions that we had. This has been some time ago. Um, we sent the questions to him, and he responded January 8th of 2020, um, number four, Thacker versus U.S., or Thacker versus TVA, it's a U.S. Supreme Court case that was recently handled down in um, last year in the spring, again, it's the United States Supreme Court case, uh, basically the rule of law in it is when TVA voluntarily enters the private sector, such as energy production, they lose some of their governmental immunities. Five, the Anderson County resolution requesting the General Assembly amend the Jackson Law. That's up for discussion tonight. It will require a two-thirds vote. It's been proposed by Commissioner Denenberg. Are you with me, Cindy? The Mr. Commissioner Denenberg also put together a cover letter to Representative Reagan. Got that as seven. Uh, a letter from the county mayor uh, to TVA re regarding the retirement of the Bull Run site. Got that as Exhibit A. Uh, resolution 1905-754, resolution requesting information from the Tennessee Valley Authority related to the Bull Run fossil fuel plant closure. That was the uh, resolution with the questions that Mr. Lyash uh, responded to. Uh, resolution 1608-598, resolution requesting the Tennessee Valley Authority to construct a natural gas combine cycle power plant on the Bull Run property in an effort to decrease coal ash storage facilities and reduce the environmental footprint of the Bull Run steam plant. Um, August 15, 2006, a motion from Commissioner Isbell made a motion to approve a resolution requesting the TVA authority to construct a natural gas combine cycle plant. That is with the accompanying resolution. Are we with 11. Yes, 12 is a resolution from 2005, a resolution to respectfully request the Tennessee Valley Authority to explore alternate methods of transportation for fuel and needed aggregate for the Bull Run Fossil Fuel Plant. 13 is minutes of the County Commission meeting from March 21st, 2005. A motion from Commissioner Gillenwaters moved to approve a recommendation from Operation Committee of two resolutions as follow. follows. A resolution respectfully requesting TVA to explore alternate methods of transportation needed for needed aggregate and a resolution encouraging TVA to assist with improvements to the Edgemore Road State Highway 170. 14 is the minutes of the Anderson County Commission from March 18, 2002. Commissioner Jim Ed Wallace moved to approve resolution for the Department of Energy to clean up. Um, and 15. Uh, resolution 1904-747, resolution requesting the TVA to extend the public comment period for an additional 90 days. 16, uh, resolution 1904-746, resolution requesting the TVA to extend additional comment periods. 17, 
Resolution 1511-563, a resolution requesting the Department of Energy and TDAC to build a new landfill site on the existing facility of DOE. Uh, we with 18 right now. 18 is a lawsuit that's recently been filed. Cruz Tucker and Amber Tucker as plaintiffs against TVA. 19 is a picture that was sent in on the, uh, two pictures, it was sent in of a little boy that has cancer in the Claxton community. 21 is two pictures that was sent in of, um, looks like um, coal ash slush running into the lake down there. I'm really not sure what this is. Uh, 22 is another picture of the same pond up against the lake or the river. 23 is an email from um, Dr. Dengosh with Duke University concerning um, the movement of fly ash at the uh, TVA Bull Run facility. You got that, it's 23. 24 is the Handbook of Pollution Prevention on Clean Electricity through the Advancement of Coal Technologies. It's quite large. 25 is a, e a power uh, magazine or journal of energy, EPO override subpart D in a newly proposed federal coal ash permitting rule. 26 is an article from a journal, coal's decline could cost U.S. railways billions of revenue in 2030. 27, settlement reached in the largest U.S. coal ash cleanup, it's an article. 28, Another article containing the EPA override of subpart D in the newly proposed federal coal ash permitting rule. How many more items you got, Jay? Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Well, can we, can you, can you just put all them in as, as? She needs to have them on the record. Okay. Uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, it's 29. Uh, survey of potential health risk on coal ash, 30 respiratory illness and uh, coal ash near coal burning plants, 31, EPA changes to the Thank all for environmental coming. protection requirements, uh, 32, an email from uh, TVA concerning bull run volunteer opportunities, 33, health benefits of renewable energy by MIT, 34, small towns across the U.S. are trading the environment for revenue, another article. 35 is the settlement article on the largest U.S. coal ash cleanup. 37 is uh, chemicals uh, from Jacobs testing at the uh, Kingston plant. 38 is special education numbers from schools, Anderson County Schools, Claxton Elementary versus Fairview, Grand Oaks, and Clinch River Community Center. 34 is a list of cost from TVA obtained from a Freedom of Information uh, request on the cost of the cleanup at Kingston. 35. Closer, an article on the closer look at coal power plant impacts. 37 is the map that we have here today. Uh, then the following is deeds of people that bought property around uh, the Bull Run site, including the Bull Run site. And if you would, just enter that as one large exhibit. There is one, two, three, four, five,
40 deeds, and these are the properties, uh, including Bull Run, the properties that were bought for the new storage facility. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Jay. I really appreciate it. Jay, quickly on them deeds. Uh, them deeds, are, are they the current deeds, or are they the deeds as when they were bought? No, they're the current deeds. As, as they sit. the former owner. Okay. <laughs> they got the real estate da data card, yes, plus sir. the uh, reference to the old deed, plus the new deed to the U.S. government. Most of the TVA deeds are in the name of the United States government. So those deeds are the properties that were acquired for yes, this sir. Site J, New Henderson? That's correct, and, including and, the Bull Run site. And those currently read as residential properties? Yes, sir, as far as the zoning. Okay. There's Thank been, we had no zoning uh, application to change that to I-2, I-3, I-1, or any change of the zoning at the thank you. side, Jay. Jay, thank you for all you've done on this. No I really appreciate it, your staff and everyone that's involved. Commissioner Denenberg, Commission, I appreciate your uh, kindness to let this public hearing take place. Um, we now will open it up to closing remarks from Commission. Does any of the commissioners have any comments they'd like to make? Commissioner Mead, yes, sir. One of my concerns is TVA right now is saying that no waste from Anderson County would be stored at this proposed waste site, okay? And therefore, the Jackson Law does not apply, thus approval of local government is not required uh, for the proposed landfill. This is my question. Once a landfill is approved and goes into operation, is there a process to change the land use uh, to include new material since all that capacity is there. Could this new approval include waste that is now from outside the county? If there is a process for that being done, we need to find some way to block it. Otherwise, the promise to never bring stuff from out of the county is temporary. Well, I tell you what, Jay, We'll get the answers later because I want all commission to have the chance yeah. to speak. Great questions, though, Commissioner Mead, and I, I thank you. And I'm sure Mr. Head will get you some responses again. Uh, any other commissioners? And if we have time, Commissioner Mead, we'll have Mr. Head answer that question. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to have the question come to light. Oh, I'm absolutely. Not about an no, answer thank tonight. you. No, thank you. I appreciate. It. Uh, any other commissioners? Commissioner Isabel. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Thank you for your time, uh, and for everyone that came this afternoon. What you see on the board is a map, and this came from the Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, which is a very, very good committee. And you'll notice that all that property there that TVA has purchased is still residential. And it is, is my understanding that that would have to be rezoned, and it would have to come through Planning and Zoning Commission, and ultimately to County Commission for this to even take place. Thank, Thank you, you, Commissioner Isabel. The property, is it is it colored up there? Which? It's the colored uh, in kind of a lime green with an R. -word. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Denberg. You can see the I-2 there to the far left. Um, that's, uh, I follow you. Site. I follow yeah. you. Anything else, Commissioner Isabel? Thank you. Any other comments from the commission? Uh, yeah. Uh, she has a question. Okay. Hang on. Let us commission talk. Go ahead. No, yes, I just uh, Commissioner Small I noticed there wasn't any uh, discussion tonight uh, on the impact, um, the health impact of Bull Run on the residents, and maybe that wasn't appropriate in light of our discussion no. tonight. But um, I'd certainly like to hear more. How does TVA intend to at least respond or deal with the concerns about the health impact on area residents? Good question, Commissioner Smallridge. Thank you, Commissioner Creasy. Yeah. TVA has said that in their comments that uh, the Jackson law don't apply. And I want to make sure that we are proceeding with the procedures for the Jackson law, even though they made those comments that it didn't apply. It, it appears that from the, having a court reporter here and, and all those exhibits, I would assume that we are proceeding with the Jackson law. Yes, sir, that's correct. We put out the public notice. Uh, we've done uh, a little bit more 
than what's required under the law. We've had the public notice on Channel 95 for almost two months now. We've also done public notices in all the papers, uh, the libraries, public places in the Claxton area. We've posted large signs in and around the facility on Edgemore Road, New Henderson Road. Uh, we've accomplished everything inside the statute regarding public notice under the Jackson Law. Thank you, Law Director. And, and if I may, just a little bit off of that, uh, but when it looked as if the TDEC Oak Ridge office was at risk of losing some of their federal funding, I want to remind everybody that this county commission unanimously voted to support the local TDEC office and request that they get their full funding. And, uh, and I just wanted to let the audience know that we're in full support of TDEC and the good work that they're doing both at the Oak Ridge Reservation and with TVA. And I commend them for the work they're doing. We're very proud of that work. Thank you, Commissioner Creasy. I agree. Thank you, Commissioner Creasy. Uh, Commissioner Isabel. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman, for allowing me to speak. Again, I want to put some more emphasis on this zoning. And I'd like for the law director to speak on that because, again, I think that the big emphasis is before they can move forward is that it will have to be rezoned and it will have to come to planning committee and to county commission before anything can be done. Would you? Thank you. Um, if we can, I'd like to enter that into the record, the zoning map, the next exhibit. Uh, what we have is uh, interesting. Uh, for years, you've heard me speak about the immunities of TVA. Um, and their preamble to their charter um, and how they're not subject to governmental regulations at the local level. I read to you tonight a case, Thacker versus TVA, it's U.S. Supreme Court case, that seems to erode some of those governmental immunities and privileges that they've had before. So that question is up in the air. Are they subject to the zoning requirements? Are they subject to our nuisance laws? Are we allowed to bait nuisances? Uh, can we prove that a nuisance exists under the flash uh, uh, or CCR is being stored at the facility? That's a legal question. We don't know the answer. We do have an opinion from the state planner that says they are subject to uh, uh, making them go back through the planning commission and have that site rezoned uh, to some sort of industrial uh, site, I-2, I-3, that's now currently residential one. Um, that's his opinion now after the Thacker decision. Uh, that the choice whether or not to bring it back through TVA, uh, bring TVA back through the permit process will be up to the Planning Commission and we'll see if TVA voluntarily enters an application uh, with Planning and Zoning Department if they go that route or if they stand by the governmental protections and immunities they have. Um, at one time we knew those were pretty solid but now that's up in the air after the Thacker decision. I can't tell you, but we do have one opinion that says they are subject to our zoning laws. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Commissioner Denenberg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm not gonna take the time since we are running so short, but I had wanted to ask TDEC in particular, Mr. Head, to take us through what is required from TVA in order for the ARAP permit to be granted. and. I know that that would take a long while at this point, so if you can just kind of, not right now, but in writing or an email at a later date that we can at least um, put that out, I would appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any other comments? Commissioner Fritz, sir. I just want to you know, come out and say, you know, uh, I know there's a lot of negative comments and uh, statements made about a lot of the signs that were put out and how you know maybe the commission wasn't solidly behind uh, this effort, whatever. Uh, I want to let people know that we were insistent that these signs be put out and that these uh, placement of these signs came from the commission itself. I know the signs were not ideal. They weren't perfect. Uh, but the whole thing was to try to just get some attention. And um, uh, hopefully if somebody saw the sign, they'd stop and read it because it involved so much information. Uh, he was placed in the newspapers, uh, it was placed everywhere, uh, on a lot of the websites. But I'm gonna assure you that not only the two commissioners that represent that area, but 
all 16 commissioners on this uh, uh, bench here is concerned about what's going on and is uh, very supportive. Uh, not only that, but the city of Oak Ridge is, uh, is, uh, is working with us to, to uh, do what is right. So, uh, uh, so trust me, you know, no one is trying to uh, pull a fast one on anyone. We want to see that uh, this is done uh, right and, uh, and everyone is taken care of and that this county is taken care of. And uh, so uh, uh, trust us, uh, we are working uh, with you and for you. Thank you, Commissioner Fritz. Okay, I, I just wanted to make a quick comment myself. Uh, obviously, we called this meeting uh, a couple of meetings ago at a regular commission meeting, and we voted unanimously to have this public hearing, and it was specifically called for us uh, for the purpose of discussing the Jackson Law. I uh, respectfully um, understand TVA's position on the Jackson Law. I also respectfully understand TDEC's position on the Jackson Law. However, the Jackson Law was established in the state of Tennessee to give protection to the communities in which the Jackson Law is adopted, in which states basically that no landfill should be constructed. I think where the, the ball was dropped, and, and no disrespect, if it had been a storage facility, it might have been, you know, uh, okay to do. But when the, when the wording became landfill, well, in my mind, we crossed the line, and now we have a landfill issue. Therefore, the Jackson Law does apply. Um, being that the, the material is produced on site, uh, I understand. I'm not a lawyer either. I think somebody said it earlier, but uh, unfortunately, the ash is not produced on site, on site J. It's a property that was acquired after the fact, and to move it to a location that was not a part of the original footprint uh, goes against what I believe the Jackson Law sets forth. So that's my opinion, and that's my comment. Also, I'd like to see TVA do a chemical analysis on all CCRs. Uh, the CCRs require more than just a physical uh, analysis and a, and a water analysis. It also requires a chemical analysis, which has been discussed a lot uh, here tonight and also in the media. And uh, I'd like to see a chemical analysis done on the CCRs. I also would uh, finally like to say that uh, I, I would like TDEC to hold responsible TVA for all solid waste and CCRs produced at Bull Run Fossil Plant. It is my recommendation that the CCR residuals be uh, monitored in perpetuity. Uh, I think 30 years is not uh, long enough. As we all know in this room, it's been said the young man's 29. Well, you know, another year that had been 30, and uh, then you'd be off the hook and you don't have to monitor it no more. Uh, I do want my kids, his kids, and all of our kids and grandkids to be able to walk around this community. And if there's an issue with any of the CCR residuals, I do believe the original manufacturer, as it says in the RICWA law, that the original manufacturer is always going to be held responsible for those. So uh, that's my two cents, and I want to thank TVA. Um, I appreciate Burt Robinson and TVA. Uh, I think this is just a part of the process for all of us to, to air our uh, discussions, concerns, and, and make sure that we're all together, and I think we'll all be together. And, and Bert, I really do appreciate you. and everyone at TVA coming and, and Mr. Lyash, uh, we have nothing but respect for, for TVA and we'll make it work. Um, I appreciate, I, I, I personally appreciate the, the ad you did because I think it gives the community a little snapshot of where things are and I encourage you to do that more. I understand the need for a memorandum of understanding but I think it's probably before not at the point where we can enter a, a memorandum of understanding without the information from TDEC and what they've decided, whether it be on the, the one permit and the other permit. And Chuck says a lot better than I do. But, uh, so that's the end of my comments. Uh, is there anything else? We got to get into our meeting at six o'clock. There is a county in North Carolina that sees. Come on, come on, come on, come on up to the microphone if you don't, and, and make it, and I don't mean to be rude, but make it quick. In North Hampton, North Carolina. What's your name? Julie Bledsoe. And where do you live? I live in Powell. Thank you, ma'am. Go ahead. So. In North Hampton, North Carolina, there's a woman by the name of Deborah Ferruccio. It's very well documented. And Janie Clark can give you the information. It was a community similar to Claxton, a small community, and they wanted to put in a... Um, three acres of coal ash. Come up here with me, Janie. We've got <laughs> Okay. The anyway, they beat it on the zoning law. Okay. What? 
what, that's how they beat it. What what and, and what Mr. Yeager is saying, the county law director, that is one of the exhibits in the attachment. Wonderful. It, okay. So thank but you for bringing it to our there's attention. There's a great example in North Carolina. They've been fighting Duke Energy a very long time there. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Okay. If nothing, no business before us, this concludes the public hearing. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.